Welcome, you're watching Lunch Money. I'm Minnie Menon, and on the show today, we have a packed lineup for you. First up, of course, Jim Rogers stating that India needs to get serious about reforms if it wants to become an economic powerhouse. Also, we track the market action with Raj Sharma of Sana in securities on the fundamentals and Hemen Kapadia of KR Chokshi securities on the technicals. Also, we discuss the government's boost for the road sector and other infrastructure bottlenecks uh, uh, with Vinayak Chatterjee of Feedback uh, Infrastructure and connect with the management of Everready on the government's uh, LED push and focus on smart cities. Uh, finally, a special deal street segment. Uh, we have former Infosys board member turned angel investor V. Balakrishnan on the buzz in the startup space. So a packed show coming up for you as always. But let's start off. Rajat Sharma, CEO of Sana Securities joins us now. Rajat, great to have you on the show. Thanks. Uh, it's been a very, very volatile one week for the markets. Now the focus is on what happens at Jackson Hole, where there is the meeting of the um, central bank heads. Uh, you know, from a purely directional point of view, are we out of the woods, or do you think there are lots more, uh, you know, tough turns for the markets right now? Yeah, good afternoon, Mini. Uh, well, I mean, I would, I would absolutely be. Uh, uh, sure that we are uh, not out of the woods right now and uh, after listening to Jim Rogers on your show this morning I think uh, it's it's just such a uh, uh, such a uh, uh, dark picture that he uh, that he posts but he makes some very very interesting points uh, and uh, uh, I think uh, what we saw last week the correction in the markets I have for long been saying the markets were overvalued now again people could blame this on china people could blame this on uh, macro factors but the truth is that the markets were overvalued perhaps the markets around the world were overvalued the fact that we've corrected may psychologically uh, be uh, be a little worrisome going forward as well could we correct more now there's china playing out and stuff but the truth is that we are still overvalued and uh, uh, with that as backdrop uh, i don't think we're out of the woods if you know that's that's uh, if one were to try and make a case for investing in equities at these levels uh, there's so much happening right now that i think the best thing to do right now would be to hold on to your cash and not invest absolutely and we will be playing out that uh, excerpts of that interview with jim rogers uh, later on on the show uh, but uh, you know rajat i'm going to ask you uh, the range from the uh, from uh, the futures and options side seems to be about 7900 to 8200 that's the broad range and on the lower side i'm thinking it could be a little lower than that uh, what, what is the range that you are saying that we could be looking at uh, especially on the lower side right now well uh again i'm no expert in terms of where uh, the expiry may happen I think the market could go down from here. And why I say that is because uh, the slowdown in China has not completely played out right now. We were talking about, uh, we were looking at metal stocks, and which is where uh, the, the, most of this pressure is coming from. And I think the problem is that, as everyone's talking about, there's an overcapacity in China. Obviously, there's a historical perspective to this. In the last few years, China has massively built up its capacities. Now, with demand slowing down, China is not able to uh, have an offtake for most of the stuff that they manufactured. Commodity prices are down. In past, every time commodity prices are down, industrial production follows. Once industrial production uh, starts declining, in a few quarters, you start seeing effect on effect of that on the corporate earnings. And it's not like corporate earnings are improving. The last two quarters, corporate earnings have shown absolutely no improvement. So. Uh, if you were to ask me for a range, I would still be slightly negative. In fact, I would say that the last week, the, the fact that markets corrected so much was actually a very healthy thing to happen. And I've been saying this for about six months now, that markets were significantly overvalued. Yes, sure, China or the recent slowdown could be blamed for this correction. But the truth is, if it was not for that, it would have been something else. Any other bad news, whether it's monsoons, GDP, anything could have taken the markets down because we were extremely overvalued. So uh, I, would, I would still be a little cautious on the markets. Again, I think uh, there's two ways to look at it. The fact that uh, commodity prices are soft would probably be very good for companies which use these raw materials to manufacture these goods. So going forward, there could be a case that, uh, you know, you could argue that with, with low commodity prices, low raw material prices, uh, earnings could improve. Uh, but then for the last many quarters, we've been, we've been looking at many reasons why earnings could improve. But, it's just not happening. 
Absolutely. I think the specter has only been pushed every quarter by a couple of quarters. But I want to ask you two very quick questions, Rajat. The first is that the beaten down stocks seem to be seeing a bounce up only because commodity prices have rebounded. But when I look at a Vedanta and ONGC, Kane, I mean, they've shaved off so much of value. Is it just dirt cheap right now? And is that why there is buying at the lower levels? What's your take? No, I would think so. I, I think I would agree with that view that it's just, uh, I mean, you have Tata Steel and uh, Vedanta and uh, uh, Jindal Steel. All these stocks have fallen about 50 to 70. I think uh, uh, Jindal Steel has fallen some 75% in the last 52 weeks. Tata uh, Steel, Vedanta, they've all fallen about 50 to 60%. So naturally, uh, there is a tendency to try and catch the bottom and buy into these stocks. But isn't the problem exactly in this space? Isn't the problem that there is a massive oversupply in China because of which uh, commodity prices across the world have become so cheap? Steel prices have collapsed, what, 80% since the beginning of this year? So uh, unless there is a revival in uh, demand, unless there is uh, some clarity on China, which frankly, uh, nobody really understands how much overcapacity are we talking about. But I would make this one case, uh, again, I was, <laughs> I was listening to Jim Rogers this morning, after saying all of this, after being so negative on the markets, he said he would be looking at investing in Japan and China and Russia, and his only argument in that, in that regard was that since, since, since stock prices in these countries have corrected by, in China have corrected by 50%, he likes to buy assets cheap. Isn't China the, the place where this problem is coming from? I would actually argue that, uh, you know, if, if India can get its act right, this may well be a great opportunity for India to attract a lot of foreign investment and say, we're going to do what the United States did six to eight decades back and what China did two to three decades back, which is we're going to build our infrastructure, ports, railroads, roads, highways, commercial offices. If you can invite the world to start manufacturing here, because so far India has been a service-based economy. This is our great opportunity to create infrastructure and say we can absorb this overcapacity in the system. Sure. We, can, we can take in, and I think that if that were to happen, then you know what we've been talking about for about a decade now, the golden run for Indian equities and stuff, that may well be true. Absolutely, Rajat. Let's hope it does happen because there's some pertinent questions that have been raised uh, by Jim Rogers and a lot of the veteran investors looking yes. at India and waiting for India to perform really and live up to its promise. But let's see how it goes and we will be playing the excerpt of that conversation. Thanks so much for joining us.